Okay, so we're going to solve some functional equations. They've all been chosen so that they each have a really elegant solution. And they all use the same kind of trick. So here's our first functional equation. This is true for all x and y. And what we're going to do is essentially take advantage of the fact that this is true for x and y, but we only really need one variable to define our function. So what we're going to do is make a very clever choice of x, so that then this turns into a much simpler equation to solve. So our choice of x, we're going to choose x so that 3x plus f of y is just equal to y. So rearranging, this means that we need x equal to y minus f of y, all divided by 3. We've chosen this then, so that 3x plus f of y, we can just replace this by y. So we get f of y on the left-hand side. Then on the right-hand side, we have y over 9 minus x, so minus y over 3. And then we get a plus f of y divided by 3. So what we need to do now is just solve this equation. So this is really straightforward from here. It's just a linear equation in f of y and y. So we get minus 2 ninths y. Then we can multiply by 3, divide by 2 on both sides. You see you get f of y is equal to minus y over 3. So we're claiming that this is going to be the solution to our equation. And this is definitely the only solution if it has one. But something that we do need to check now is whether this is actually a solution. So we'll talk more at the end about this verification step why we need to do that. But basically all we're going to do is just make sure, check if f of y is equal to minus y over 3, does this actually work with our original equation? So we end up with minus 3x, then plus f of y, so this gives us a minus y over 3, then all of this gets divided by 3. Let's make sure this is indeed equal to y over 9 minus x. So cancelling you get minus x, then you get a plus y over 9, which is what we want. So minus x plus y over 9 matches up here. So you can see that this is indeed the only solution to our functional equation. Now here's our second functional equation. Once again this has been chosen so that it has a really nice solution. So it's not immediately obvious how we could get rid of both of these functions within our function, but a sensible starting point might be just trying to get rid of this innermost function. So we can choose x so that x minus f of y is just equal to y. So we need x is equal to y plus f of y. So let's substitute this in, see what we get on the left hand side. We have f of x gives us f of y plus f of y. Then we've chosen x specially so that x minus f of y is just equal to y. So we just take away an f of y here and all of this is equal to y minus 1. So this is really nice because now our two f of y's actually cancel and we're just left with on the left hand side f of y is equal to y minus 1. And once again, I'm going to claim that this is going to be the only solution, if it is indeed a solution, just like for the first example. So why is this? Well, our functional equation is true for all x and y. Then all we've done here is we've said, well, for some specific values of x, this is true, and then followed a logical sequence of steps. So the functional equation implies that f of y is equal to y minus 1. And similarly, our first functional equation implied that f of y was equal to minus y over 3. We do still need to do this verification step, though, to make sure that this is indeed a solution and that the functional equation doesn't just have no solutions. So the left-hand side will do this step by step because there's a few iterations of the function to do here. So you have x minus f of x minus f of y minus 1. So let's write this as x minus... Now we're going to get x minus f of y minus 1 in brackets minus 1, and f of y, we replace this now by y minus 1 in brackets, minus 1, two brackets, then a minus 1 here. So you can see here our x's are going to cancel, you've got an x and a minus x, so they're just going to disappear. We have minus minus y, so we just get a contribution of positive y here. Then if we look at our 1's, we have minus 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 1, so a negative 1. Here we have a minus minus 1, so you get a plus 1. And finally, we subtract another one. So this is indeed equal to y minus 1. So this tells us that f of y equals y minus 1 is the only valid solution to this functional equation. Now here's our third and final functional equation, which also serves as a cautionary tale about checking your solutions at the end. So here we're actually going to make a clever choice of y. So we're going to choose y so that y minus 2 f of x is just equal to x. So you want y equals x plus 2 f of x. Let's plug this in and see what we get. So on the left hand side we just end up with f of x squared, and this is equal to 4x times all of this, so 4x times x 
plus 2f of x minus 16x squared. So then we can expand the brackets here. We'll take everything onto the left-hand side, set it equal to 0. So we get f of x all squared minus, now you have a 4x times 2, so minus 8x times f of x. We've got a 4x squared and minus 16. Take it onto the left-hand side, we get a plus 12x squared. This is all equal to 0. So here you can actually solve this as a quadratic with the variable being f of x and treating our 8x and 12x squared as constants. Or you could see there's a nice factorization here. So this factorizes and gives us f of x minus 2x multiplied by f of x minus 6x is equal to 0. So this tells us then that our two candidate solutions are f of x equals 2x and f of x equals 6x for our functional equation. So let's try f of x equals 2x, we'll plug this in. So on the left hand side we get 2x times by, now it's 2 times y minus 2 times f of x, so 2 times another 2x. Let's see what happens when we expand all of this. We get 2x times 2y, so this is equal to 4xy, and 2x times another 2 times another 2 twos times minus x, we get minus 16 x squared. You can see that f of x equals 2x is indeed a valid solution for this functional equation. So now we'll check if f of x equals 6x works. So substituting in here into our original functional equation we get 6x times 6y minus 2 times 6x. So then when we expand everything and multiply we get 36xy minus 432x squared. So this is nothing like what we wanted on the right hand side. So it seems 6x doesn't satisfy our original functional equation. So what's gone wrong here? Well the problem is that we chose y equal to x plus 2 times f of x and it's actually f of x equals 6x is a solution to this functional equation it's just it's a solution for all x in the reals and for all y equal to x plus 2 f of x. So here in this specific case this is for y equals 13x. So this is a solution to our functional equation. It's just only true for these certain values of y that depend on x. It's not true for all x and for all y, which is what we needed. So we'll have a look at a simpler example just to illustrate this kind of scenario. So let's say we had f of x times y is equal to x cubed was our functional equation. We wanted this true for all x and y in the reals. Now you can check that this has no solutions. Just try plugging in a few different values of x and y. You'll get a contradiction eventually. But let's say now that we've chosen y equal to x squared. So for all x, and also for all y equal to x squared, you would get f of x cubed equals x cubed. So f of x is just the identity, f of x equals x. And this is a solution, so long as x is allowed to be a variable, and y is equal to x squared. So here, by imposing restrictions on our y, we do get a solution which works for these specific values of y, but in general this isn't going to work because it doesn't hold for all values of y independent of your value of x.